Hi everyone, I'm Yu. Today we are going to talk about chill water system. So first of all, what is chill water system? So in the previous video, we talked about uh, this split air conditioner. Right? It's sort of like a home air conditioner, 9000 BTU, all the way up to 5 ton, right? the central air. So what about large building, right? like shopping mall, hotel, even hospital? right? How do we bring air conditioner to this kind of large space? For example, hotel room, they have 500 rooms, right? Doesn't make sense to install 500 split unit there, right? Because the entire external wall of building will be full of aircon. We need something that is centralized. That's where we use chill water system. You see, chill water system is not a direct expansion. Last time we talked about direct expansion system, which is we directly use refrigerant to cool the space, right? So indirect expansion is chill water system. That means at the heart of the system, we still use refrigerant but we use a secondary coolant which we call chill water basically it's just cold water it's just our normal water with a little bit of chemical later i'll explain so it's just water so we use water as the secondary coolant for example in the uh, shopping mall or hotel or hospital most of the space right is cooled by water it's cooled by cold water so right there is only water leakage, there is no like refrigerant leakage. So a chill water system actually, they centralize the cooling power at one place, which is the refrigeration cycle, all right? And the refrigeration cycle is at the chiller. Chiller is the one that is doing the refrigeration cycle. Other stuff going around is just moving heat around using water. Let's talk about the component of chill water system, right? First of all, it's chiller. So chiller, there's also like two types of chiller. One is, we call it the air cool chiller. Again, similar to the split AC, which is they use outdoor air to cool the system, all right? And then the air cool chiller itself, because it is a chiller, we talk about chiller is they use refrigeration cycle to cool the water, all right? And another side is water cool chiller. Water cool chillers, they use water also to cool the refrigerant and then the refrigerant go through a refrigerant cycle and cool the water, produce chill water. So it's like this is water cool chiller, both sides also is water, right? One water absorb heat, another water is rejecting heat. So there will be two loop because a water cool system is more common and more efficient. So let's focus on water cool chiller. So now the chiller produce chill water, right? So how are I going to send this chill water to every corner of the room for the cooling, right? How are we going to do that? So we need a pump. So there's two types of pump. One is the chill water pump, obviously, right? On one side, the chiller will produce chill water. Then the pump, chill water pump will send the chill water to every corner of the room, all right? On the other side, we have this, we call it the condenser water, which is basically doing the condensing process, right? Like the first video we talked about the condensation of the refrigerant, right? So the condenser water is actually also water and the water is used to condense the refrigerant. That's why it's called the condenser water, right? So here also we need another pump. So we call it what? The condenser water pump, right? Make sense? So here also they will bring the water for heat rejection somewhere. Lah. Later we'll talk about somewhere. So now there's a pump, right? The second item is pump. Move water around to move the chill water and condenser water around. So now, you move around, that means you will need pipe, right? You need pipe, lah, obviously. So in hatchback, in chill water system, we call it the what? Chill water pipe, right? Makes sense. And here is the condenser water pipe. So because the chill water pipe is cold, right? Let's say we talk about cooling, right? It's cold, ma. so chill water pipe must be insulated. All right, otherwise, you've got condensation issue. La. We know about this. And then the condenser water side, usually they don't need insulation la, because the temperature is slight, slightly uh, the same as the outdoor temperature. So that's the third component, pipe and insulation. Now we can talk about what happened inside the cooling and what happened inside the heat rejection. Let's talk about cooling first. So we produce the chill water, right? Then we send 
We use a pump to send the chill water to every corner of the room via chill water pipe. Right? Then, at every room, we need some sort of heat exchange mechanism. That's where we call the air handling unit. Right? The chill water pipe enters a cooling coil, just like a split air conditioner, but only the indoor unit. Right? Inside the air handling unit, there's a cooling coil. All right, there's a coil, basically it's just a thin tube heat exchanger. Last time we talked about split air conditioner, refrigerant will enter, cold refrigerant will enter, then we have a fan, push the air through, then we have cold air come up. But this time, chill water system is different. We don't use refrigerant anymore. We use what? Water, right? Water will go inside the coil, then the same thing happen, right? We push indoor air, circulate it through the coil, cooling happen then we produce cold air then the water there's no evaporation process anymore right because it's not refrigerant it's just water so chill water will flow through a coil as it flows through there's no condensation thus the temperature will increase right usually like 6.7 uh, degrees celsius come in chill water supply temperature then go through a coil come out about 12.2 degrees celsius they call it the chill water return temperature. So the pump will send chill water to every air handling unit, which is the big, the big one, and also the fan coil unit. They call the fan coil unit the small one. So basically just they both ASU and FCU is thus uh, cooling. Lah. So you send the water through all of the unit, right? All of the unit, pass through all the coil, then come back. All right, come back, then the water become hot already. Mah. So now, the water will make heat exchange with the refrigerant again, right? It's like release the heat back to the refrigerant, then come out as a cold water again. So this is an, a, a loop, we call it the chill water loop, right? And it's a closed loop, that means it just like enclosed, lah, doesn't open. So it just loop around, loop around, loop around. On the other side, all right, here we absorb heat, then we need to reject heat now. So we talk about the condenser loop. So the condenser loop, again, pump, condenser water pipe, we stand to where? We stand to a quite a big component we call the cooling tower, right? Cooling tower usually we can see at the roof, right? Cooling tower's job is to dissipate heat, to reject heat, right? And how does it reject heat? It uses outdoor air to cool the uh, condenser water. So basically the Condenser water will go up until the cooling tower there, the big unit there, and sort of like spray down, right? It's not a mist, but like increase the contact surface area. Because the cooling tower a lot of, like a lot of thin one, right? The water will just flow slowly down. Then there's a fan, a big fan just draw air and like heat exchange, right? Directly blow through it. There's no coil or anything, just directly blow through the the water so basically is the cooling method is what we call the evaporation cooling all right so uh, when we talk about technical side it's like the cooling tower cools like based on the wet bulb temperature so it's not a dry bulb anymore it's a wet bulb temperature if you install a cooling tower it's at somewhere it's very humid one right so it's very hard for the water to evaporate so when the water is very hard to evaporate right the temperature drop is not that much right you can't bring the, the the water temperature down that much so in dry country right the cooling tower is very strong right the delta t is very strong a lot of water can evaporate then the entire condenser water temperature will bring down a lot like for example usually the design is like somewhere around 35 degrees celsius condenser water goes to the uh, cooling tower then comes down about 30 degrees celsius a 5 degrees celsius different Right. So if you can increase that, that means the, if the condenser water comes back to the chiller is even lower, right? That means what? That means it has the capacity to take away more heat from the chiller, from the refrigerant. Then efficiency will increase, right? The same amount of water, the same pumping power, but then now you are capable of absorbing more heat, right? So that's the entire system of the chill water. And then there's one more component. Cooling tower there, just now we talk about evaporation, right? That means the water will be getting less and less, right? Condenser water, you keep evaporating, so you're getting less and less. 
That's why we need not just normal water tank. So in HVAC, we call it the makeup water tank. It usually works automatically. Whenever the water level of the condenser water drops, right, at certain, then we just uh, via gravity to make up, lah, just to replenish uh, some normal water, right? So, so this is the two system. Lah. One is the chill water loop. Another one is the condenser water loop. One is responsible for cooling, heat absorption. One is heat dissipation. So the entire system rely on water, right, to run around. So we know that water actually is like a bit corrosive. Closed loop side, the chill water side, right? It's not very, it's not a lot of problem because it's closed loop. So uh, we only need like, for example, you want to kill the bacteria, you kill one time, then the thing will just run smoothly, right? So it comes the, what we call the water treatment, right? In HVAC, chill water system, there's also one element, is the water treatment system. So the water treatment system basically is like, uh, before the chill water operate, we just treat one time the chill water and then because it's closed loop so uh, we just leave it there running so the water treatment basically is like balancing all the ph right so that the system will last longer on the condenser water side is more critical it is where we always talk about water treatment the like chemical or non-chemical is about the condenser water because the condenser water is exposed to the outside Condenser water is open loop, it's not a closed loop, it's open loop, open at the cooling tower. Right? Just now we say water, ambient air, they contact directly, there's no coil or anything to protect, right? It's directly contact, so all the dirt, right, all the bacteria will go in, all the acidic thing will, will go in there. So the water treatment system at the condenser is sort of like automatic one. So it, it will like put in dosage, there's sensor, right, there's, there's some electro sensor to sense the pH, sense the amount of electron inside, so it all sort of like measurement. Just to make sure that we hit a specific pH level, it's not too acidic or too uh, alkaline or something like that. So to make sure the system runs properly, la, the, the water quality is good, always good, so it, it runs properly. Water treatment, there is a limitation, right? It's even you put chemical or non-chemical to balance the pH, there is still residue, right? There's something residue, maybe the a rust or, or some, some big particles that you, you can't just get rid without throwing out the water that's where we call the sometimes people call the blow down or just a flushing like flushing just like uh, the system will automatically open a valve to drain down a certain amount of water right depend on the sensor la, at the cooling tower basin there because cooling tower is go down then collect at the basin before go back to the system before go back to the chiller ma. so here you collect then uh, you see there's a lot of like dirt at the below of the tank, right? Then you just flush, like throw away all the dirt once in a while. Eh? Then that's called a uh, cooling tower blow down. So let's talk about efficiency. Because the reason why we use chill water system or what we are trying to push as a air conditioning engineer, right? In HVAC general is about efficiency. Because you see, building, they use a lot of energy. And chill water system already reduce the... Uh, energy usage and now we want to one step further we have a few different types of chiller right some is more uh, some is cheaper more economy some is more efficient right so the water cool chiller is sort of like the standard one right everybody is using water cool chiller efficiency is good and the all other aspect also good like economy and installation occupy space also like quite balanced so most of building is designed to use water cool chiller. Some building we can design air cool chiller, right? Then we sacrifice the efficiency. The reason we use air cool chiller is because it's, it doesn't need cooling tower. Air cool chiller itself, the chiller itself is sort of like water cool chiller plus the cooling tower already. Because the chiller itself has a fan. Uh, then it uses the fan to cool the condenser water or in this case, air cool chiller just cool the uh, refrigerant, right? There's no condenser side. So it's like half of the system already. You save a lot of space already. But the problem with air cool chiller is you need a lot of roof space. You need a lot of space that's exposed to the outside one, right? Because you need ambient air. Ma. So you, you take up a lot of roof space and maybe it's quite noisy, right? The fan noise plus the, the chiller compressor noise. Uh, 
Uh, so that's one of the limitation of uh, air cool chiller. Another more like currently latest technology on chiller is the magnetic bearing. Right? Basically, it's like water cool chiller. Then you add a feature called magnetic bearing. That means you you float the compressor, then less friction and all sorts of other benefit, right? Like uh, less noise, then oil free, right? No need to maintain. So all this thing is the latest technology that goes by the name uh, magnetic bearing chiller. So that's all for chill water system. Thank you.